I think one thing to take into account is the fact that with Catch, he has had some hard opponents in this Swiss. And the games have actually been, oh, sorry, the games, the series have actually been quite close. So this is her opportunity to make that reverse sweep back going from that 0 and 2, and obviously she won in the uh, previous week. But, you know, she definitely can come back from this. It's never been any clean sweeps or anything like that. And she hasn't really actually struggled at all. It's just been a series of being very, very close. And it's just got to a point where she's been struggling just to close them out, you could say. But it's like I also said before, she had some hard opponents previously. Yeah, yours truly included. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I forgot you actually played yeah, as well. Yeah, we, so. we played in week one. Yeah, that's straight off the bat, wasn't it, pretty much? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I completely forgot about that, in all fairness. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'll, I'll take that one. Yeah, no, no. That's a compliment, mate. It's a compliment. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. And of course, with Catch, you will have that odd warrior to begin with. And uh, with Osha's death row, Hannah. Yeah, as I was saying, this is just a very difficult matchup. Um, I've played a bunch of odd warrior myself. We sort of had to play a lot of it to for, for Hearthstone Global Games. So I was kind of the one jamming a lot of these. And I found that you can actually beat this, this Hunter deck. Um, you kind of just end up having to play for fatigue a lot of the time because you just can't... You can't out-tempo them ever. Your deck just isn't very threat-heavy. Um, you're just you essentially just run removal and a hero power. That's basically what your deck is. And Osha's deck just has really good uh, ways of stopping AOE removal. So things like cube, things like leaving an egg on the board. So if you brawl, there's probably going to be two minions at the end of it. Things like that just really add up. So I think the way that Cat can kind of try and win this is is just by playing for fatigue, making sure she presses presses that hero power every turn being very greedy with her removal. Um, obviously, we can see Osha having the Kalaseth on two. Not what Cat wants to see. Yeah, it's um, it, it just seems to be every time I cast, someone has a Kalaseth in their mulligan. <laughs> I don't know if it's just a coincidence or what, but yeah, you are right, though. You know, Rivers Odd Warrior is a bad matchup for them, but I have seen Aura beating um, def some Death Runner Hunters, but it's, like I said, it has been very rare, but it's in a kind of those circumstances where a lot later in the game, like, you know, I've seen a couple of players will use uh, two brawls just to try and clear the board because, you know, there's been too many eggs and too many 5-5s five on the board to try and have clean up. So as long as she can delay things enough to get to that stage, then it could be okay, but it will be extremely oh, tougher. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's kind of... Osha needs to not get too complacent in the matchup because, um, sort of, if he just greedily throws everything onto the board and just really overcommits to boards, then... Cat would potentially be able to look at that and say, well, actually, I've, I can I can use maybe two removals on this board because of how much you committed. So after your death rattles, like your eggs and your cubes have gone off, I'm still going to be able to... I'm just going to use two removals because you've committed so many resources into this. So I think it's something Osha needs to be a little bit careful of to not overcommit into boards while putting enough on the board to actually pressure the warrior. So there is a very delicate balance that you need to kind of try and achieve here. Yeah, and of course with Osha, you know, you can take out that Acolyte with the weapon and with the Killer Seth. The problem is, I'm not sure if you want to do that straight off the bat, but it wouldn't be a bad shout. At least you can get it out of the way. Yeah, shape or form. Won't, of course, uh, overdraw, but at least the Acolyte's done and dusted. Yeah, I think Osha is considering actually using his Hunter's Mark here to sort of deny a card from Cat, but I'm not sure if it's the best. Actually, just choosing to ignore the Acolyte, which kind of makes sense as well, because he wants to push the damage with the with the Kelaseth. Um Interestingly enough, Cat is actually running the Acolyte. A lot of these warrior lists um, cut Acolyte just for sort of greedier cards, but we can see she's got the Acolyte. She's got the mind control techs. Um, things like Shield Block have been cut from a lot of lists that essentially play more heavily for that fatigue plan, but she's quite sort of going for much more the control and the aggro plan rather than uh, t sort of hedging against control matchups, as it were. Yeah, she has some ways to actually pull this back anyway. Not only um, in any way, shape, or form, but it's got plenty of taunts. So, for example, like, you know, could get a Stone Hill Defender and then off to get another taunt from that. Got two Giggly Inventors in this deck as well. So, she can delay things enough to keep her options open in case things get a little bit out of hand and Osha's on Osha's side. We'll have to see how it goes in these next few turns, I think. Yeah. Uh, Cat choosing to use the coin here and coin out the Darius Crowley. This is actually sort of a few turns now where she's sort of missed this hero power. Um, it's made sense for the turns, but for the long game plan here, I think maybe it won't, it might end up punishing her a little bit. Um, quitting out the Darius to remove the 2-2, two -two, it's kind of half hero powering anyway because you've got the, you're removing damage from the board, so you can look at it that way. We can obviously see Osha's got the removal. Um, the, the biggest weakness Cat has here, I think, is the fact that she's not running um, 
and be cows in her odd warrior. So she has no silence effect for these cubes or um, eggs. And Osha's going to be aware of that and not worry about getting them uh, activated in... Uh, sorry, getting the silence before he can get the activator off. So actually going to be very greedy with this play dead, not choose to get the 5-5 five five on board here. Um, and just sort of t take his time very patiently. And of course, she'll just need to make sure that anyway she can use that MC tick in some way, shape or form. Because of course, Osha just got to be careful not to get overzealous and go, not not play too greedy, but like in this kind of stage, and like, you know, it's very easy to get like four or five minions on the board from Cuban the egg and of course initiate with play dead and using the spider bomb to delay things a bit further. So he just needs to be careful of how it plays this out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we can see here the, the long-term punish for Osha not choosing to kill the Acolyte with the Kaliseth and the candle shot a few turns ago. This Acolyte has, if this egg sticks around, unless Osha cubes it this turn, this Acolyte will be drawing three cards, which maybe isn't where Osha wants to be. Or maybe it, maybe Osha knows that this matchup can go to fatigue sometimes, and if the Warrior keeps drawing cards, that's kind of a way you can win. Um, Cat choosing, obviously, to just go with the Giggling Mentor. Recognizing that it's just a good turn to get it played out. Has the Doctor Boom in hand already? Um, that can be pretty key. Obviously, you're a little bit reliant on what hero powers it gives you, but the Doctor Boom hero power is a great way to try and outline the warrior. Because um, things like obviously Rexar is kind of the the Death Knight, the Hunter runs in this matchup, but the the Warrior hero power can actually outvalue Rexar as well because you get removal from it, you get the Discover a Mech, which is effectively like Build a Beast because it has Rush and you can impact it on the uh, you can dictate how it trades on the board immediately. Uh, Osha choosing to tracking last here, so order lol, I guess is the is the phrase I believe Twitch chat used for that one. <laughs> it probably is, it wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, it's um, quite a tough one. Of course, I'm glad he didn't uh, use play there because of course that will give him a more than enough reason to use that MC tech on it anyway. But that's one brawl, but it's not going to make too much of a difference here. I assume she'll be saving that for at least a good while until things get a little bit out of hand. Does have another cube for later on anyway. So, for example, like could use play dead on that cube and then, of course, cube one of the eggs again. But like I mentioned before, she can only get lucky with that one MC and things could go completely opposite way of the spectrum. Yeah, I think this might be a sort of... This is where uh, missing hero powers early on... Um, if it doesn't save you damage overall, kind of punishes you because now the hero power shield slam doesn't remove a 5-5 five five by itself. Cat would have to trade something else in, so either the Acolyte miss a card draw or trade in a Taunt um, if she wanted to go down that line. Actually, she's going to trade in the Acolyte, so next up another Giggling Inventor. Giggling Inventor's really good against this deck at stalling. Um, it's not so good into Candle Shop because when the Hunter can just Candle Shot through the Divine Shield, you lose a big factor there, but overall, this is just... This is a pretty good spot for Cat. Um... Osha didn't have the explosive opener that Warrior just struggles to deal with. So Cat's been able to buy a little bit of time here. Actually just going to full trade and now play the Giggling Inventor um, rather than using the Hero Power Shield to land that was a potential setup for that play. Yeah, it's basically just doing its job, you know, just to delay things further until to make a decision on what to do next. And of course, Giggling Inventor is a bit of a joke on things. <laughs> with things I was going to say Odd Rogue then. Uh, so with Chris Rogue and bits and pieces like that where it's very, very valuable. But at this stage, he's playing it right, but he's still in that tough spot where he's got all the pieces of the puzzle, but he knows that one of his minions at some stage can get taken if he gets four or more on the board. And this is the problem he's having. A uh, spider bomb won't make too many differences as now because he won't get much value out of that. At least he's got another weapon so that to cover himself a little bit further just to get rid of the divine shield. But even then... You know, it's not looking too bad for Cat so far, even though it's a little bit unfavored. No, Cat's put herself in a great spot to be able to play this Dr. Boom on seven. Um, against Hunter, often it can be quite difficult to get the Dr. Boom out. Seven mana is obviously quite clunky. You can't really do too much else in the turn. Um, and if they've got a very big board, um, it's just so much pressure against you that you really struggle to find the time to spend seven mana doing that. But Cat's let herself get there. Osha's going to go for this play dead here. Just get two eggs on board, which um, aren't the most impact. It's kind of... Long term, it's gonna it's good against your uh, against cat's AOE effects, but short term they just really don't do a lot. Cat just doesn't need to be worried about them on the board. Actually, it's gonna get the gore howl up and kill the ooze, which seems great here. Um, Osha just didn't really hasn't really put the pressure on this game. 
Yeah, this could be a time where, you know, there's plenty of ways he can actually do this. If he got a Gilling Inventor down, then at least one of his eggs won't get stolen. But even if he cubes one of them, you know, that's five minions on the board. And for there to be a 20% chance for that cube to get taken, that would be, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that would be quite a shame. But, yeah, we'll have to see when that will happen. Yeah, obviously we can see the MC second hand that, that Cats uh, got ready for these eggs if they ever get activated. Osha going to go for the Giggling as well. Um, the Giggling is just not that much pressure for the Warrior. I think there's one thing to take into account as well, of course. What she could actually... Nah, it's a shame she can't because I was thinking at least she had some armor on board. She could Reckless Flurry and then potentially brawl straight into that. But of course, she hasn't actually got the mana to do that. So it's a bit of a tough spot. Like she could MC at this stage, but the only problem is, is the fact that it's not going to get too much use. She wants to wait for that kind of circumstance to actually be able to do this. And the problem is she can't flurry this early just due to the circumstance. Of course, you don't want to deal with four or five fives straight off the bat and have a lot of work to deal with. Yeah, we can see here that, uh, you know, Osha's just not really got too much pressure. Cat's got a lot of options. These Dynamatics can be used to clean up non-mechs. Obviously, you don't want them to hit the eggs. But um, the Ziliacs can uh, attach to one of these Anoitrons and heal up, and then you, you know, get a 4-4. Four, four. You've still got this Giggling Inventor on the board. I think this is the one thing as well as to have it. At least it keeps that armor to flurry and brawl next turn, and this will be perfect. But we'll have to see exactly how Osha will deal with this. I think he knows that that's probably the one of the only way outs Cat has to kind of deal with this. She could have MC'd earlier, but even then, it's not really worth just stealing one egg or one of the inventors or the taunts or anything like that. It's, um, yeah, it's going to be quite a difficult one. I have to see when's the best opportunity. As long as he keeps that armor there, then she'll be okay to at least play that to play that flow in the brawl. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, like you were saying, you don't really want to MC tech these eggs. You'd rather steal them when they're five fives. Um, the eggs are... The eggs aren't the worst to steal um, just because it gives you insurance against a brawl, but obviously not great against your Reckless Flurry brawl turns. We can see Osha going for this King Crush here, hoping it will stick if he is able to clear off the armor, but uh, we can see the BGH in hand as an answer for that. Yeah, it's going to be plenty of options. He's got two MC techs now. It's uh, still a possibility to use and see how it goes. Like, she hasn't really got too much time to play with, but we have to see exactly what she takes. Does take one of the eggs, and of course, she will deal with that King Crush with that big game hunter. So, it's in a lot better spot, and the best thing is she's still got all the AoEs and all the bits and pieces in the world to try to find an answer to what to do afterwards. Yeah, I liked Kat going for the MC Tech, potentially taking the King Crush there. Obviously, that would have been an insane tempo swing for Kat if she... If she's able to get that. So I, I did like recognizing that was an opportunity. Picking up the second mind control tech means that, you know, you're a lot more free to do that, even though you can you have the BGH available. But obviously if you MC tech the King Crush, that's way better than MC teching a 5-5 five five later down the line. Especially because it had the Keliseth buff. It was a 9-9 nine nine with charge. Yeah, I couldn't really <laughs> complain in all fairness. And I wonder. right now you can see it does have that high mind, does have well, has another egg, but let's be honest, at this stage, it's not really too useful at this point. Yeah, we've already seen one cube from Osha, so if if Kat recognize if Osha uses the second cube here just to activate an egg, Kat kind of recognizes that there's not, you know, that much that many threats left in the deck. We've seen the King Crush, the high main's at hand that could just come down this turn. Um so this if if Osha's able to find a Katharina at any point, it's just nowhere near as impactful as, as it could have been if because you know the beasts are already gone. Yeah, it's very difficult. It's more we're playing. They're both playing the waiting game. They're waiting for her to make that first mistake. But I think it's more Osha waiting for her to play, you know, like a brawl or flurry. Uh, the MC takes first before he can actually cube anything. Because, you know, he has the ingredients there, but he can't actually physically use it until she's played it. So she's actually, I would say, in slight control in terms of the um, in terms of the circumstances. Yeah, I think it's it's been Kat's recognised very well here that I think. You know, just not using remove on these eggs. They're not threats by themselves. And I think it is like you were saying, where they're both kind of waiting for the other person to make the first move. And I think it's right of Cat to just say, actually, you have to make the first move. The more time you give me, the more time I get to 
outvalue you with my hero power because obviously two damage from the hunter hero power versus four armor from the warrior hero power. It's pretty clear which wins. And now switching to Dr. Boom. The Dr. Boom hero power is better than the hunter hero power as well. So... But at least she finds an answer to that high main anyway. Let's get those two twos off the board. So it's just back to square one again. It's just, it's a shame because Archer just has not found an answer to try and get what he wants out of the board. He has a strike, but even then, I think he's just trying to bait out that MC text, just trying to bait out anything she has to kind of cause any issues for him. But you know, it's just, it's like I said before, it's that, it's that waiting game. And, you know, Cat just needs to stand, stand still, just wait. Try and get as much out of him as possible and then play what she likes straight afterwards. Yeah, and uh, like you're saying, obviously the flanking strike is pretty good here, but it's just really not enough pressure. Osha's just not been able to put pressure on Cat's life total here. Cat's had these, this Brawl and Reckless Fury set in hand. One thing to note with the Reckless Fury Brawl that we were talking about is that by giving up the armor up here, power, you make it a little bit more inconsistent to be able to do that. We can see the shield block in hand, but obviously that's. That the reckless fire in the brawl will be 11 mana, so that kind of needs a little bit of setup if you don't have the armor up hero power from the Doctor Boom. So I, I it'd be interesting to see if Osh is able to recognize that at any point. And because the Doctor Boom hero power switches for your opponent's turn first, um, you get to see what the hero power is going into the turn. So I wonder if Osh is going to be able to recognize that that's not a, an available play if he's able to clear off the armor and sort of abuse that in any way. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I hate being in this kind of situation where, you know, you have the potential possibilities, but when you know your opponent's got the answers and you're trying to bait out these answers in any way, it can be a bit of a, a bit of a pain, you could say. And you can see he's just putting more and more minions on the board this just to try and say to Cat, look, I know you've got another MC there, just use it. Or I know you've got a fly on the board, like just to try and do anything, shape or form, but just not taking any of it at all in the slightest. Wow, that... That dynamatic was a very unlikely outcome, but really not what Cat wanted to see, where three of the five hits just go straight into one egg. Um, <laughs> that did not seem like a very likely outcome at all there. Um, I mean, Cat's able to, with, with the hero power and the Eternium Rover Rush, Cat is able to uh, clean up here if she wanted to. Goes for the MC Tech here. Seals the buffed egg, which is actually quite nice here because she can use that egg to trade and actually proc it herself, whereas now, obviously, the ones on Osha's side of the board don't have any attacks that can't. No, no, I was literally going to say the same thing, you know. Could have taken one of the D02s and the 03s. It would have just sat there like a Larry doing nothing pretty much. Would have had <laughs> too much use at all. But at least like with bits, you can what train. What year is it? Do we, still, do we still say like a Larry? Is that... Yeah, I still say that. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fine. I see. Whatever. Uh, it's just one of my, uh, what's it, cheesy little phrases, you could say? Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably say that. <laughs> but even now... What do you feel like Osha can do in this kind of circumstance to kind of mm. push Cat to make that vital move to try and get rid of some of these AoEs or try and get rid of um, some of the answers that Osha has? Because it's quite so, a difficult one. Yeah, Osha's able to actually value trade this 5 for here. Play the cube and then Terra scale the cube so that he gets 5-5s five fives out of the, out of the um, cube and has a cube full of 5-5s. Five fives. This is kind of the pressure he needed earlier but just wasn't able to find. Um, this is what the warrior struggles to deal with. Um, we can obviously see there's another dynamatic in hand that might be able to do some work here, but it's just not looking great overall. Cat's obviously got the Whirlwind here. Um, the Whirlwind's an interesting choice. Often in the Odd Warriors that run Whirlwind, you would run um, uh, the Nine Drop, the the Battle uh, the um, I, I can't remember the card name for the life of me now. It's the Nine Seven that destroys all damaged minions. Um, King Mosh. Uh, but Cat's actually chosen not to include that here, so doesn't have that as an AoE removal option. So the Whirlwind's an unusual card. It is a one-off. Um, so I'm not really too... I guess it synergizes with your Acolyte, so it kind of makes sense. But it's definitely interesting. and be interesting to see if she's able to use it here. It does look like Cat's going to go for a Brawl this turn. Uh, she's able to clean up both of the eggs and then go for the Brawl. And, I mean, the best case scenario for her now is that the cube lives. But the worst case is there's going to be uh, two five fives and then one of the other minions that live. I think there was another play she maybe could have made. Um, with that 5-7, there was one of the eggs which was 0-2. She could have whirlwind to get one of them out, could have traded with her egg with the other one. Used, and whilst that cube was in a 5-6, could have hit the weapon and one of the other minions to at least get the cube to come out straight away and then board. So at least that way, it would have been a lot more easier. And that way, they were only being one 5-5 for one of the players rather than uh, what we're seeing now. 
Um, yeah, I mean, Kat's obviously just decided that she wants all of this Death Rattle stuff gone now. The King Crush is gone, so there's actually... Um, the only burst from the Hunter now is Hero Power. Kat can kind of recognize that she's actually able to just take the damage. I'm surprised she used the Shield Block, because she could have actually just gone Shield Block Reckless Flurry as a follow-up. Um, which would have just cleared all these minions, but obviously both cubes are now down. And then it would only be Rexar for Osha. Um, so I think that might have been a little bit of a mistake at the end. I think she maybe panicked a little bit, running out of time. Uh, she wanted to use the Discover a Mech Hero Power, but had the option to just even play the Dynamatic if she'd wanted to do that. Um, chose the Brilliant Nullifier, which is um, magnetic, can't be targeted. It's a 7 mana 3 8. Going to be able to stick that on an Italian Rover, which then has Rush, so that it's a 4 uh, 4 11 minion, but. Gains armor every time it takes damage. Um, Cat's looking okay here. The the high main's a good follow-up here for Osha. Most of um, the hunter lists actually only play one high main, but Osha's um, kind of expecting these these greedier matchups where he needs the high threat density and chosen to play two. Um, and just a really good follow-up here, to be honest. Yeah, I might have been wrong, but I just felt like if they used that whirlwind, traded one egg with the other, and then... Because the cube was only on, uh, would have been on 5 6, could have traded with the hero power and one of the other 3 1 minions. I felt like at least that way it could have just used a brawl and that was it. But the things that with that brawl, the difference would have been, would have been um, be the fact that there would have only been one minion on either side rather than the three you see on Osha's and the two on Cats. So I'm not sure it was too much of a loss. I'll have to see that play back because that's what I kind of how I felt. But yeah, I think yeah, it's I th be a bit more of a tough spot. I didn't mind Cats play too much. Um... Provided she saved the, the the shield block for the... Because Osha's deck doesn't have the burst, so um, there was just really no way for for it to get punished because uh, Cat would have just been on one this turn. She's on six anyway. It's kind of the same. I mean, obviously she front-loaded the mana, but then she'd have been able to go shield block, correct this flurry, and we're doing fine. Obviously she's found the solution here with the Eternium Rover to gain the armor anyway, but um, I think it could have been maybe a little bit cleaner. Um, we might be missing something. Obviously, we have knowledge of both hands, but um, potentially Cat just ran out of time, potentially. It was yeah, definitely an interesting turn, though. Yeah, that turn, uh, that's what I kind of felt. It's like I said, I probably have to see that play again. Like, I was just quickly looking from the top of my head. I might have been mistaken, but it did look like that's what she could have done to kind of ease the damage, ease the blow, you could say, for her. But, yeah, I have to, definitely have to watch that back, but... Earlier she could have played that ooze, but um, I don't think that really matters anyway because both that weapon's already done and dusted. Yeah, obviously the stone hill pickup means that she's going to be able to find a taunt. Maybe just put something else on the board. Um, we can see there's a spider bomb in hand, so if Osha's able to activate that at all, then this is potentially a lethal setup for, for Osha. I think the most likely thing is either the Senjin hit. Uh, Kat could take the Talor just because it's a big minion with 11 health. Um, but then she missed out on this hero power, which is discover a mech, which... Um, it's kind of one of the better ones because the mechs have rush now. So it's very difficult to say. This is a really interesting decision. I think the Tar Lord is obviously just better on board, but if Cat can live long term with the. by picking a smaller minion, then it means she gets to pick another mythic minion like a Dynamatic here, which just helps clean up the board so much. Options for the Eternium Rover instead, though. Yeah, she will need to find an answer soon because he's only got 4 HP, so it's. Kind of run out of time a little bit and, you know, getting that full 13 on boards straight afterwards, it's, <laughs> it's not the one thing you want to see, really. Yeah, and with the Shaw, this is a potential lethal for Osha here. Is there any way to guarantee this? There's not, I don't believe. Um, not from what I've spider seen, Spider Bomb no. can take the 1 in 3 if you trade in the 413 into the 1 4 first, though. Um, I mean, obviously, it's it's a pretty good board state anyway. Um, Osha might choose not to commit here, but I kind of think it's worth just going. You just play it here because it doesn't. There's not really too much that can punish you by playing this spider bomb. Holding it hasn't really doesn't really help you. So I think you sh he should just take it. Um, probably go trade the the um, Witchwood Grizzly into the Stone Hill first as well, and then put the spider bomb into the three fives engine just to increase the chance that it hits it. Well, I've seen some weird things in my time, so, <laughs> so that wouldn't surprise me, in all fairness. But yeah, it's like it's looking quite blue. Of course, that flow has not really got too much use. As you can see, also Frank hits that whirlwind earlier, made a, a, you know, a massive, massive fail at the time. Doesn't take out the minion she wants, but you know, it could be delaying the inevitable anyway. So we'll have to see exactly what happens, of course.
Don't find an answer this time. Of course, she has that. Or she has that hero power. Yeah, Cat might. There might be something she can do with this Italian Rover gaining armor for this breakfast flurry, but it's looking really rough for her here. Yeah, I think that's what she was looking for. That stone hill would have been better earlier if, uh, as a, just a general taunt con just to keep him at bay, considering the circumstance you see was in, but it just seems like it might be a little bit too late. Yeah, I mean, Cat has to gain armor this turn because otherwise she's just dead to the hero power on board. Um, potentially a divine shield here might be able to save her. The, none of this is too useful, I think. I think this is just going to be lethal for the Osher. Yeah, it seems like that stage yeah. in the moment. Yeah, it was just a shame. I just, I don't know. After looking at one play again, just to make sure um, in those kind of circumstances, because I just thought like, you know, with those three five five straight after Matt, after he'd done that ball and everything like that, did 15 damage instantly. And if she had a bit more health in that kind of circumstance, like you saw there, maybe she could have done some other play, some other action where she could have made some kind of comeback. Because you saw at that stage, or she was kind of running out of steam towards the end. It was just lucky that, you know, he kept her at bay to that point. Yeah, I think that was definitely the key turn in that game for both players, really. Um, I think there are probably some different things Cat could have done there that might have meant that the game changed slightly, you know, gave her more life total um, to work with in the later turns. And we can see she was kind of just on a knife's edge at the end, so maybe if she'd had that little bit more to work with, it would have been it would have been enough to get her there. Yeah, it's quite an unfavorable matchup, of course, and, you know, it could have gone either way at that kind of point because you saw there that, you know, it's just pushing Osha to the limit, you know, just got to a point where it's like, oh, I have the answers, but I'm just waiting for you to make the first move, you know. Those kind of scenarios can be, you know, a bit of a pain. We've all been, <laughs> we've all been through it and we've all been done that. But, yeah, it's nice to see that, you know, it didn't actually, it took a while, but I think eventually after so amount of time, we realized that there was so much on the board, maybe Kat just, you know, she made most of the right decisions anyway, but the odd small play here and there may have just cost her. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, it's kind of what I was saying where you want the hero powers to kind of go for that long game plan. Um, it made sense when Cat didn't play the hero pack will go for hero powers, but obviously we're going into game two now. We can see Cat's queued up her control priest here. It's going to be against the Torn Druid for Osha. Um, again, this is this is another pretty unfavored for, for Cat. Oh, yeah. This this deck goes for sort of you know hitting you down with Anduin and then going for mind blast finishes. But Druid gains a lot of armor. Um, the important thing to note is Osha doesn't have the Death Knight because he's playing a, uh, a Taunt Druid, so you don't want the beasts in your Witching Hour Resurrect pool. Um, so it doesn't have the the Malfurion inevitability, but it's still a lot of damage Cat's going to have to get there. So I wouldn't have even hated tempoing out this Wild Pyro. But she is playing an Alex Straza though, so the the damage you do to the isn't to armor isn't as relevant uh, as it is uh, as it could be. But obviously we can see the double Wild Growth Hand for. But Osha with the Oaken Summons as well. Oaken Summons is going to put Minion on the board so that this Minion chip damage can't really get through. Um, Twilight Drake is going to be pretty good, but it might be a turn too late. I love how you were speaking about armor and literally straight off the bat in his mulligan, he's got 18 armor in, <laughs> in hand straight away. Yeah, it's it's quite a big deal a lot of the time. Um, yeah. But we'll have to see now, of course, you know, he's still got another Wild Growth that he can play later on at some stage when he gets the opportunity. Yeah, probably going to try and look for it on sort of the turn five because it puts you at, puts you at seven man on the turn after and you can coin out a Primordial Drake if you want to. Um, cards like Primordial Drake are historically just really difficult for priests to deal with because obviously they run... Um, they struggle to deal with four attack minions. Cards like Twilight Acolyte help it a lot. Cat's played the Shadow Visions. Um, I believe she was just looking for... Um, um, Divine Him here because that way she'd be able to play it and he was... Um, heal both the minions, draw two cards, but I always find it probably going to have to just take the mind blast. The psychic scream is definitely a consideration because Cat's going to need time to get through the druid's life total, and psychic screaming big boards away is pretty good against druid, especially because you know they run recruit type things like oak heart, like dragon hatches. So once the board's on the board and been cheated out effectively, there's only really one card a turn, and you can let the board build up again, Psychic Scream again. So Cat choosing that, figuring that the extra time Psychic Scream is going to buy you is going to be worth a lot more than the damage from the Mind Blast. Yeah, I always felt like in this kind of matchup, you always need at least like three Psychic Screams just due to the fact that, of course, with the Hadronoxes and when it gets naturalized and then which an hour later, it's, you know, it is a pain. I'm not going to lie, especially from the Priest point of view. And for Cat, I can understand why she went for that Psychic Scream. If there was anything I'd want, normally I'd want at least three. But even if you have like three or four, you've got to remember that at some stage you could lose to that fatigue and it can be a bit of a pain. Yeah. 
Um, I think if you've lost to the Fatigue, you've kind of probably lost anyway because the Druid gained too much armor for you to get the damage. Um, a key thing for Cat is having this Anduin really early. We can see she kept it in her Mulligan, which is obviously a great choice because you just need to get that those pings in as often as possible, as early as possible, because like you said, Osha had 18 armor in his Mulligan if he wants it. Uh, obviously, Branching Paths sometimes comes out for card draw, sometimes comes out for um, attack on your minions if you've got a wide board. I think one thing to take into consideration as well is that you made that armor point right at the beginning in this matchup, and it's a very good point as well, because of course, you know, if Cat plays at Alex Strauss any time and he has no armor, then of course he's got those Mind Blast and all other bits and pieces to the puzzle. Of course, there's another one to try and um, get that lethal, but of course with Osha, he's going to know that straight off the bat, and he's going to make sure he's as healthy as possible so that he's free to do whatever he likes in that case. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And with this Lich King pickup, I think this is definitely a turn Osha wants to wild growth. Um, it was a possibility to do last turn because he could have gone for a coin primordial drink this turn, potentially. Um, I'm doing not too. I'm just going to go for card draw here. So Osha's definitely wanting to sort of just really aggressively pressure Cat here, not to worry about the life total on it too much, um, which it's hard to say what's right here because because Osha's got such a threat dense hand already. I mean, he's already got a dragon hatcher, one of his dragons, and the Lich King. So drawing cards is a risk because you might draw more dragons and sort of make your um, uh, your dragon hatcher sort of redundant. I mean, he is running the sleepy dragons as well, so there's still a couple more to come. But I think we're likely to just see something like a Lich King from Cat here, uh, from Osha here, against Cat. Is it going into a Psychic Scream turn? So it's it's kind of okay if they Psychic Scream that. Obviously, we can see there's a Shadow of Death, which is definitely an interesting tech card because. Um, it's not that common that the priest list were on Shadow of Death and Twilight Acolyte. Um, obviously, that tech choice is going to pay off for Cat here as she's able to death this Lich King. Yeah, it's a shame. Like, you know, she was only one off her and win to take out that Lich King anyway, but it's not really a bad shot having that death. Yeah, you're right. And I haven't seen, um, I haven't seen many deaths in a long time, actually. I think the last time I saw it was during the days of the big priest. But, you know, if there's any time she's going <laughs> to use it, of course, it is going to be now. And. You were talking about the turn earlier. Yeah, I was surprised how greedy he was playing. Like, you know, instead of going for, like, maybe go for six armor and maybe draw a card rather than draw a card both times, he seemed to just want to try and get as much done as possible, just try and be as aggressive as possible with his deck. And I think that's the great thing about Taunt Druid, is the fact that you can be that aggressive with his kind of lineup. And, of course, if you've got two Wild Growths, or if, if he had a Wild Growth and a Knife, then, of course, it would be... Uh, yeah, you could say it would be Loving Knife, but there's two Wild Growths at the start. It's definitely... Um, Given him a bit of a hand. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't actually think Cat needs to be too worried about this dragon hatcher here because, I mean, all it's going to put one more dragon. She's got these psychic screams. She's got three in hand now. Um, and she's just got such a healthy life total that I think it's worth her just taking the time to get this hand win online. We can see the Alex Straza in hand as well, which is huge because obviously Cat didn't get too much early minion damage in with the Twilight Drake or anything. So that's that's a nine mana 8 8 that deals 13 damage to Osha. 13 damage is going to be a lot in this matchup. Yeah, he's not going to be... What's the word? Not think of a word, but he's not, <laughs> not going to be enjoying himself, then that's to say. But yeah, I think it's a good thing to go Anduin down, because of course, if he puts Alex Strahd the next turn or anything like that, then it's going to put a lot more pressure on Osha. Uh, he's going to struggle in terms of like exactly what he's going to do next, because he's not got too much armor. But one thing to take into account as well is the fact that he could easily windle Osha down slowly but surely. You know, he still has that Mind Blast, still has another one in her deck to back up if she draws it. Has those three psychic screams to keep Osha at bay from trying to get that, wouldn't say fast lethal, but slowly but surely for Osha. But you know, Kat, she has the answers. It's a matter of if Osha can at least find the ingredients to try and keep her back, but it's not looking too likely. No, I think this was good recognition from Kat that Osha's got no more dragons uh, in his deck. So this means that Kat knows there's another Primordial Drake in hand, but this three minion board, even if the second branching path's in hand, it's not too big of a deal if it comes out this turn, because you've still got the Alex Straza down, so it's kind of a clunky card. Um, Cat does have an Omega Medic as well, which isn't in every list, so that's if you have 10 mana, you get to heal for 10, which is pretty good. Pretty good when you could just take the damage here and Psychic Scream later. Taking the Dust Breakers, obviously, a bit unfortunate, because Cat knows there's, there's a dragon in hand, so <laughs> that's actually active. Um, but I don't think it's the end of the world. The Death Grip's not usually the most impactful card in this matchup. Um, obviously, stealing dragons is a bit annoying, but it's really not the end of the world. Um, 
And obviously, if Osher commits more into this board, then Cat's just going to be able to Psychic Scream it away. If Osher doesn't commit more, Cat's going to be able to start getting to work with these pings. So I think that was a really, really smart turn by Cat. Yeah, I think you're right as well. Um, she knows at this stage, in terms of uh, what she needs to do, to try and avoid that fatigue as much as you can, it will do at some stage. And it's like you mentioned, just got to keep pinging until we get into a certain stage where you can use those Mind Blasts to finish you off. It's just a matter of how and when. And Right now, she can at least trade with one of the minions for the time being. I'm not sure if it's too early to use a socket screen. In my opinion, I think it is. But we'll have to see how it goes from there. Yeah, I think Cat's going to just be able to save it for um, much more scary boards. Things like uh, a Hadronox Naturalize board, for instance, that's going to have a Lich King, that's going to have these these dragons on it. You really want just want to psychic scream those. Um, obviously, we can see there's no Hadronox available for Oshi yet, but it is going to come in at some point. Um, and Osha has to be a little bit scared here. Cat's played both Shadow Visions, so there could be a double Mind Blast in hand from the Shadow Visions, plus potentially one naturally drawn one now. So Osha has no way to gain armor here, though. This was this was kind of the risk um, that Osha took with by drawing with the branching paths, that she's going to run out of health effectively. Yeah, it was funny how I was saying, oh, look, he's got 18 armor to start with. But yeah, this is why I, you know, it's quite a hard decision to make, you know, I haven't making that aggressive play of drawing those two cards, which is fair enough, but you kind of want to play it safe in this kind of scenario as well. Maybe just have six armor on the card. At least play it safe, but greedy at the same time to a point where, you know, you're not putting yourself in a bad spot to a point where you can only play certain things at certain times just due to the fact that you're in a bad predicament. Yeah, obviously we can see Cat's getting pretty low on health here. Um, so just going to choose to scream this board away. I, I like playing the Omega Medic, Medic as well, although misses out on the pings. Uh, if we look at her hand, it's quite expensive anyway. So she's not going to be able to get lots and lots of pings in it per turn over a few turns. But it meant that Osha wouldn't be able to have a double swipe hero power lethal there because Cat was down to nine health. Um, obviously, she's going for the Nourish to draw, refilling, drawing some of the cards that just got shuffled into the deck, like like the Dust Breaker and a Primordial Drake. Yeah, it just needs to try and get Osha down as much as possible now. Of course, with the two Mind Blasts and the two pings, that'd be 14. So it just needs to try and get a little bit more damage done to keep him at bay, and then she'll be in a, a lot more comfortable spot. But to be fair, in the state she's in, I think she's doing okay. You know, he hasn't got his Hadronox yet, and at that point, he does have a Naturalize, but this is the thing, you know, it's, and she's actually just, well, you could say just outside of that overdrawing if he ever did ever use a Naturalize, but it's got really no reason to use it at this stage. Yeah, definitely. And that Dustbreaker pickup's actually really, really big for Cat here because she can potentially just ping the minion once. Dustbreaker to clean up, gets pushed to three damage with the minion on board. You know, ping again, or potentially even just play a Twilight Dream. Um, I think given how many taunts Usher has, Cat should be just weaving in these pings, especially with the Mind Blast in hand. Like, I think that was a perfect turn from Cat there. Um, it gives Usher the ability to just Dustbreaker back, but I think Cat's pretty happy if Usher just Dustbreakers because. It's just not a high pressure turn, so Osha instead going to go for the Wrath. And I'd imagine we'll see something like a Primordial Drake this turn, just because Osha really doesn't want to take the three from this Dustbreaker. Yeah, he knows. He, I think he knows now it's got to a point where he's got to play extremely safe, he's got to be extremely careful, and, you know, oh, I've just seen the second Mind Blast <laughs> as well, so... Yeah, that is going to do it. The double Mind yeah. Blast is 16 potential damage. Um, and Cat able to even up the series in what's often quite a hard matchup. Osha just not able to get the pressure early again. Um, Cat had a lot of time to, I mean, she had enough time to play Anduin that didn't do anything with the Battle Cry and the Alex Draza immediately after. So Osha really not able to put Cat under enough pressure until it was too late when she just was able to psychic scream it away, get get board control back. Yeah, we might have seen a little bit of a different scenario if we went for that 12 armor rather than the two uh, the two cards we drew. Because I even said it just, I think, two turns before she got the second Mind Blast. I said at some stage, you know, to use those to get a second Mind Blast and to get that 16 damage done. And I think when you got to that point where it's down to like uh, 15 or three armor, I said you only had to do just a tiny bit more damage just to get things out of the way. And she's all set. It's just a matter of waiting for that that lethal card, of course. And yeah. when you got that second Mind Blast, she's already. Uh, and the pickings, of course. Yeah, it's, it's difficult because you need to find the balance between gaining enough health to get out of range of things like that, while also drawing enough cards to have it, to be able to put enough pressure on. 
Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to try and like say, you know, you've got to feel sorry for Oshin in some ways where because, you know, he had to naturalize, didn't have uh, any Hadronoxes at all that game. But, you know, he had two wild growths, you know, I think there's maybe a couple of misplays, maybe some small mistakes he could have at least changed around, you know. That 12 armor, you know, we could be seeing this game going for at least another 5-10 minutes considering the circumstances he was in. But I can understand where he was coming from. I think he just wanted to be really aggressive, just wanted to get things out, not out the way ASAP, but in case something would have happened, I feel like he maybe should have played more in a fatigue role rather than being too aggressive, would you say? Or would you think that was the right move from what he did for those uh, card draws? Um, because Osha doesn't have the Malfury and he doesn't have sort of the inevitability tank up, so it's really hard to say just because um, if he didn't draw, maybe he wouldn't have been able to get to a position where he had the cards to put enough pressure on anyway. Um, but obviously we can see we're going into game three. It's going to be Cat's big spell mage against Osha's Taunt Druid. And Cat keeping this Polymorph. Polymorph's one of the key cards in this matchup because you Polymorph, you add a sheep into the Witching Hour pool. Uh, you actually remove a Taunt from the pool as well. That's that's another big upside that's kind of overlooked a lot. Uh, if you Polymorph that Lich King, Lich King's never coming back. It's done. It's dusted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a bit of a hard one. Of course, Osha is going to be expecting that anyway. And it's going to be, you know, this game is going to be a very slow one to see how things pan out in terms of what's going to happen. We'll have to see if Osha does go for more card draws here rather than that armor, which he does, of course, do. Now now's the time to go for that card draw compared to the last one. And, you know, you can ar arm up later from that summoners anyway. We'll have to see how it goes from there, really. Yeah, Cat's got a pretty good opening here. The Raven Familiar on two just draws a card. Those, the AoE is obviously not relevant early, but definitely relevant later, and you just get to draw through your deck a lot quicker. Has the Frost Lich Jaina in hand already, which is pretty key. Uh, has an Arcane Keysmith as well, which is just a pretty good play on four. You can go for things like Mirror Entity if you want to try and take one of their big taunts because this deck doesn't play many small minions. I think the smallest thing it plays is probably a Trog Glue Meter. And if they play that into a Mirror Entity, that's pretty okay. That's a good trade. Yeah, in terms of his, uh, his hand for Osha, it's not looking... Most fantastic, you could say. <laughs> Pretty users to be on belief, and at least that gives Cat enough time to not delay things, but keep things going a little bit and get that Jaina up later on. Yeah, um, we can see here that Cat chose to play the Stone Hill to protect the Acolyte here, which I think makes sense. Maybe potentially wants to try and get more card draw out of the Acolyte than than just the trade. Obviously, able to ping it herself, but um, it's just kind of key to try and. Get as much out of your cards as possible in these sort of matchups. Um, obviously, going into the eight mana turn, this is definitely when a cat wants to Keysmith to try and get that mirror entity. Um, you're going to be hitting things like a Primordial Drake or a Lich King a lot of the time. Um, explosive runes is is useful, um, but it's not as useful as if you want to polymorph the minion. Uh, I'd be surprised if Cat had chosen the um, the Frozen Clone just because Cat's got some hand size issues anyway. So probably wouldn't want to be adding to that. So I think Explosive Runes was probably the most likely there. Um, and that is what she's taking. Which is um, really good into this Primordial Drake because if you really don't mind the Primordial Drakes coming back. It means that you can just um, Flame Strike this board down if you wanted to. Uh, but we can see there's a key card that Osha drew that turn going into turn nine. <laughs> and that's Master Broke Heart. Yeah, cause of course, like in this kind of scenario, it's, it's very difficult because especially when they get that Jaina up as well. It's you know it's extremely hard to kind of contend with it, but with his Taunt Druid as well, we'll have to see how things pan out because we'll just try and clear that board ASAP before things get a little bit out of hand. But that Drake earlier, you couldn't ask for a, a better Drake clear in all fairness. Yeah, I think the Meteor may potentially have been a bit premature just because um, the Meteor bigger things, but this Blizzard Doom says looking quite good for Cat. The Flame Strike's not quite good enough by itself yet, and you, you're, you can't ping. Uh, Cat saved the coin. Obviously, Cat wanted to try and coin Jaina. Um, not likely to be able to happen now, because this Oak Heart came out. It was pretty powerful. Uh, we can see that Osha's third dragon, the Primordial Trake, is already in hand. So this this Dragon Hatch is not that much of a threat anymore. But a Blizzard Doomsayer forces out probably a Naturalize if, if Osha doesn't want to just forego this board, which, looking at it, I really don't think he does. But the Blizzard does that for the Flame Strike to clean up some more minions. Yeah, as well as getting that Blizzard and Doomsayer down, if he does naturalize it, at least Cat will overdraw by one, depending on what overdraws will be. Uh, of course, it will be another story, but 
I think you're right, though. That's literally going to be Osha's only answer. And at least for Cat, even though she only overdraws by one, it'll, um, Osha will at least keep his uh, minions alive. But I think it's going to be a little bit annoyed if it's got to use a <laughs> naturalize on a Doomsayer, though. Yeah, you definitely want that. I mean, the issue is that there's always a risk of, uh, if you ever just play your Hadronox on the board and there's a Polymorph available, it just gets Polymorphed. Um, so that's kind of what Osha has to be a little bit concerned about here, just because throwing away a Naturalize when you only have two. Uh, I believe Kat is playing Geist as well. So, oh, sorry, no, she's actually cut the Geist. So these Naturalizes would have been able to stick. Um, but now, in order to be able to safely play your Hadronox, you're going to have to find another Naturalize. Otherwise, you do risk it just getting polymorphed and kind of losing your big board generators. Yeah, it's a hard decision. You, I think we all know that he's thinking the same thing. Do I, <laughs> do I play it or not and just leave it for another day? But I can understand why he has to use it. And, of course, does use that naturalize anyway. He won't be too happy about it, but at least that way he'll feel like he'll um, try to lay things further. But you've got a member as well. She does have that flame strike, but does have that polymorph as well. Yeah, this is, this is still a really rough board for Cat to try and deal with. I mean... The Flame Strike leaves just a Lich King and a Sleepy Dragon, which isn't the biggest threat, but that's still another 12 damage that's going to come in. Um, you'd really like to avoid. I mean, ideally, you'd have sort of another Blizzard here. Um, but you really don't want to leave the Lich King up either, it's because generating these Lich King cards is never is never great. But I don't think Cat has the time to play Polymorph here just because of cards like Branching. Card. But it looks like she is going to go for the Keysmith Polymorph. Um, I think if she went for the Keysmith, she might have gone for something like um, Ice Barrier there rather than the Mirror Entity, just because cards like, yep, yeah, that is the Ice Barrier. Uh, a Branching Path's off the top for Osha. So how much damage is that going to be available? That's an extra 10 from the Branching Paths. That's, I believe yeah. this is just, it would have been lethal if it wasn't for the Ice Barrier. Yes. So good on Cat to recognize the Ice Barrier, <laughs> but I don't even know if the Flame Strike's going to be enough here because the... The Sleepy Dragon's still going to be on board as a 6-10. Um. But I do like what he's done, though, is the fact that he feels like to take to take out this big spell mage, it's just a matter of having to get things done quick. Need to get out of the way ASAP, which is completely understandable because when you get that Jaina out on a, you could say, a clear board or a very comfortable board in her favour, it's so difficult and it can be such, such a pain. But you're right, though, even with this Flame Strike. Yeah, sure, I this will take it all down, but that Sleepy Dragon's still there. Yeah, I really think I really think Kat should have gone for the Flame Striker when she went for the Keysmith Polymorph, just because mm. the giving them the extra Lich King card just wasn't worth the risk of the damage you take here. And I mean, even if, if, if the Keysmith had missed um, Ice Barrier, right? Yeah, you'd be stuffed. <laughs> yeah, you'd, you'd have died that turn. So I think I think this was a misplay from Kat. Um, Gonna go for the Raven Familiar into a Blizzard, as I believe that's her only out. Actually hits it, which is wow, pretty insane here. <laughs> um, yeah, so Cat able to just stay alive here. Um, yeah, I definitely think that just giving them the extra Lich King card was probably more effective than than letting yourself take that much damage. Yeah, that was literally the one answer she needed. Could use that Flame Strike, but it's like we mentioned before, you know, that Sleepy Dragon's still gonna be alive on that. Probably be about 6-6 six, six at the time if she did use it. The problem is, this Sleepy Dragon's still around. Since the, what? <laughs> like a few, like, oh, quite a few turns ago, wasn't it? Yeah, this, but this turn, the cat just has no answer for it. There's a Polymorph, but then the other minions stick around. The Flame Strike, it's just not good enough. It has to be Arcane Artificer Flame Strike, I believe. I think that's kind of one of the only way out, ways out of a cat here. Uh, Osher actually is going to go with the Hero Power to face to set up Lethal with Hero Power Swipe next turn, um, even if the board was cleared somehow. Yeah, I think it's going to get to that issue now. Even, if, like, even with the Jaina, you know, it's not going to make too much difference anyway. It may get a bit of armor, but it's going to be no way of being able to clear that board. And yeah, I think you're right at this stage. Yeah, I think Cat let herself take too much damage off that board that could have been Flame Strike and then Polymorph the turn after. Maybe too greedy, would you say? Because you've got to remember, I think she did, well, she does have uh, two flame strikes and she knew she had a second one at the time. Yeah, definitely. I think you should have just accepted you'll take a bit of damage from the two minions as opposed to a lot of damage from all the minions and just giving them the Lich King card. Um, obviously, you don't want to give them the Lich King cards, but if there is a branching paths in hand, it was so much damage. And obviously, Osha did find the branching paths, 
pushed all the damage and able to just get the job done. I don't really see an out here for Cat now. Yeah, even putting that Baron down, you know, it's going to do two to all, but she's only got three HP afterwards. And even then, still got a minion left on the board, still got that swipe. There's so many different answers, and I'm not too sure right now if there's actually a way out. Even if he puts that Ginkling, uh, Ginkling? Giggling <laughs> Inventor down, I almost said something else in at that stage. <laughs> But no, it's uh, no, it's, it's lethal on board through yeah. Giggling Inventor, so really just not good enough. Um, yeah. And I think it all came down to the, the turn that Cat didn't play Flame Strike. Yeah, I can understand that to a certain extent. I think she's playing like quite greedy in terms of like trying to delay things as far as possible because she knew that at some stage she has to play that that trainer. But the only problem is that she didn't really have any room to deal with it because you know Osha always had that ball control to you know try and at least keep Cat on her toes and to constantly use those airways. But maybe that one flame strike could have been the uh, decision maker for her to at least try and uh, make a comeback. Yeah, definitely. I mean the Lich King would have been there to polymorph anyway. But Osha able to get it done with this Druid in what's often a very difficult matchup. Um, I mean, obviously, if you can just create a board that the mage isn't able to clear, like we saw there, then you can push a lot of damage through and just set up lethals and swipes and things. But I think this is the only problem we're going to have now. Of course, with Osha, his last deck is a Q block, I think it is. And of course, as you can see from Cat's Eyes, he still has that big spell mage, still has that odd warrior. And with his Q block, how would you say it does against big spell mage? Because I think, in my opinion, it will struggle a little bit if it doesn't get anything good going to begin with. And I think in the later stages, normally the big spell mage, normally, like, as you may have seen before, can just do so much damage and get to that point where it's just out of control. Yeah, it's always one. Of, it's always been one of those really interesting matchups because um, the sort of the Frostlich Jane versus Gul'dan battle, where one is just removal and healing, and one creates minions that have healing. So it's always been really interesting. If if there's not a huge blowout from the Warlock, where they go, you sort of mount a giant into Skull with little who's on the other side, and then demons. Then it's always super interesting. It's very very tough matchup of who can use their resources better. Um, and we can see we're going to be able to get it here. So we'll be able to see if there's a blowout opening or who can use the resources better. Yeah, it's been, to be fair, it's been like that for both of these guys every single game. It's um, They've played it not very slow, but like very patient, I like to say, because, you know, they're both making the right plays. You know, there's been a few mistakes as things went on, but... One thing to point out is that Osha does have that weapon and he does have a Void Lord in his mulligan. So, yeah, not too much of a bad start to say. Yeah, the Void Lord is obviously the less pressure demon. Much rather have a Doom Guard just rushing into face. But um, you'll take any demon with the skull over no demon with the skull. Yeah, I'd prefer that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anything's better than nothing at this stage. And yeah, sure, fair enough, you know, Void Lord's only a 3 9. But, and in all fairness, it's not going to do too much just due to the fact that. With the mage, doesn't really put too much board presence anyway to begin with, depending on the situation. It does get that Jaina straight afterwards, but yeah, we'll have to see how it goes from here, though, for Osha. If Osha doesn't get the pressure with this skull, then um, the early Jaina is, is often very key in these matchups because it means that if you have the polymorphs later, um, obviously that's just a water elemental straight away. If you have just other removal, it makes it makes the, it really hard for the Warlock to play things because they have to think, Oh well, if I play a four health minion, they meteor the minion next to it, gives them the ping and things like that. And then they have to think, well, how do I deal with all these water elementals, especially if they don't have that Gul'dan? Yeah, that Gul'dan is so so vital in this match, especially with that Jaina. Like you said before, it's uh, that hit and miss with the hero powers to try and get some kind of not just that board presence, but of course try and avoid. I think that's one of the good things about Gul'dan is the fact that you know if any minions do get that one health, at least you can trade off and still get that free damage back. But it's going to be very, very difficult. I always feel like Osha, in, especially in this kind of circumstances, needs to get the job done. Obviously, not as soon as possible. We know what control looks like. It does take a bit of time. But maybe with some of the Doom Gas and the cubes and that kind of bit of pe sorry, pe sorry, bits and pieces here and there to make up for the puzzle, then he can maybe end things. But it really depends on what he draws in his next few turns. Yeah, I mean, these matchups sometimes go into fatigue. So how much he taps and plays librarians and things is going to matter a lot, I think. Um. So Cat would be able to take Counterspell here to deny a coin weapon, potentially. But I don't even know if coin weapon's that powerful for Osha with this hand. Um, this is a very difficult choice for Cat. The, the explosive runes means that maybe she can go for more tempo. But she doesn't really play that many mi like mm. mid-game minions. She's got these top-end threats of Lich King, Dragon Caller, Alana, and Geddon. But 
they're pretty expensive. And Osha, you know, Warlock has a lot of healing. It plays these spell stones. Um, it has Gul'dan, which we've just seen drawn. So I'd be surprised if we saw Osha tapping anymore. Opting to go for the Coin Skull here, which obviously he needed to play something to get a full hand. But oh, the top deck ooze for Cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Osh is going to get the bad news here. He's going to be upset. Oh, that is the worst, isn't this is, it? This is why I love when we have cams for the Prem, by the way. We saw Cat smile. Oh, I'm going to play the Raven Familiar first as well, potentially. Might even just ping the Acolytes draw a card. But uh, we can see Osha looking a bit nervous. Making him sweat. This, making yeah. him sweat, yeah. Oh, the stress. Is he... I'm just waiting for his face to see his reaction. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking, mate. Yeah, that Void Lord ain't going down till turn nine now. <laughs> yeah. That's a shame, though. You know, literally, as soon as he puts that on the board. But in all fairness, in previous weeks, I've seen Cat get really unlucky in certain scenarios, which is why at some stage he's not been able to close out some of the games. So it's actually nice to see uh, manage to take out that weapon top deck in that ooze, in all fairness. But this is what we were talking about before. I was saying in Osh's predicament, he needs to try and get something out as soon as possible. You know, he needs to try and get a huge amount of ball presence to, you know, stop, not just stop from getting to the Jaina stage because that's probably going to happen anyway due to the, what kind of minions they have in both their decks. But now, you know, it's just made things so much worse for Osha now. He has to put these minions down as standard. Yeah, I mean, it's just very difficult for Osha because he doesn't really, ha his hand just doesn't really do anything without that skull. Obviously, there was the, the Void Lord it would have pulled out. The Giggling Vent is not even great because you just give the Acolyte more draw. Um, going for the Librarian. There is a Librarian Defy was a potential clear. Um, except it was actually Explosive Reads and Cat Pit. So Osha going to take more damage. Manages to find the Mountain Giant though, which he's going to be able to play now if he wants to. But I'd imagine we'll see Cat just go straight for a removal on him. Something like the Meteor. Probably save, choosing to save the Polymorph for Demon so that it doesn't come back in the Gul'dan. Yeah, this is very worrying, actually. Even if she does polymorph this, of course, you can um, use that stone heal for later to have, you know, some kind of board presence going into that nine, uh, into that nine mana Jaina. So even then, it's looking very worried. It has the Doom Guard, but let's be honest, a bit late now, isn't it? <laughs> that would have been perfect for the weapon considering the circumstances. Yeah, I think Osh has got such a an awkward hand here just because, I mean, what do you do? Do you just play the Doom Guard and just... Say, well, you know, you don't, you're just meteored. You don't have polymorph because I I don't want that to get polymorph for my Gul'dan. But, I mean, Osha will know that Cat kept a card from her mulligan. Um, the cards that you would be looking to keep are cards like Frost at Shana and Polymorph. So he's going to have the right read about one of them. It's just, what does he go for? Um, he could potentially just go for a Giggling Inventor, <laughs> but it's just not even really that impactful. The issue with the Giggling Inventor is later on it just becomes a Water Elemental. So yeah. potentially it is better to just play it early before... Cat's able to just turn it into a water elemental. Um, but it is sometimes just defile fodder as well. It just turns, I think when it gets to that stage when Jaina comes out, Giggling Inventor just turns into a dead card. Eventually yeah. Just due to the fact that you're actually helping Cat more than helping yourself in that stage. And it's really annoying when you have those kind of cards in your deck because obviously when that comes out, then it makes you wonder, well, what else can you do? But considering what kind of minions Cat has in her deck, she's actually been getting out some quite decent ones. Not only, of course, destroying that weapon, but she's actually been playing a good mid game going into this. Yeah, I mean, this is this is big spell mage. He's got the Warlock down to eight health. <laughs> Who would have thought seven. it? <laughs> <Turn> seven. <laughs> um, there is a Godfrey to clean up here, but the Abomination is going to push some more damage. Um, and Osha just not able to get a board, really, that can deal with, that puts Cat under any kind of pressure. She's chilling at the moment, really. Like, you know, she's probably expected a bit more of a fight, but after taking down that weapon, it's like, what can he do? Of course, put that Doom Guard down. There's always that very, very small opportunity of losing Gul'dan, losing the Void Lord. So many different scenarios he's going to have to put himself through, but eventually he's going to have to take these risks or else she's going to take this game. Yeah, and unfortunately for Osher, obviously there's the Polymorph for the, the Void Lord already. Um, so it's just kind of, it's not looking good for Osher here. Cat's got, obviously she doesn't have ball control at the moment, mm -hmm. just playing this this um, Stonehill Defender, but going into Jaina and then being able to Polymorph the Doom, uh, the Void Lord as soon as that comes down. Really good. Uh, Osha just not having the explosive start of Mountain Giant either. A Mountain Giant on turn four for the cube ball, that could be quite hard for the mage to deal with. It's kind of only Polymorph, but then they Polymorph that, they don't Polymorph on your demons later on. Um, Osha drawing the second Doom Guard here. Would have liked to see something like a Lackey, would have been able to go for the uh, 
Zest Lackey and Dark Pact, pull out a demon from his deck, which would have had the 50-50 to be the Void Lord or the Doom Guard. Yeah, there's so many different ways and scenarios Osha could have been in with that weapon. The only thing I could have said is the fact that, you know, it does have a cube in hand. So if one of those Doom Guards went up automatically, he could have actually taken this game, like if he had a cube in hand and also had that weapon still. But that one ooze being top decked has changed things completely. And it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's quite funny to see actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can see here that, I mean, this isn't a particularly threatening board, but it's still threatening lethal. A giggling inventor is threatening lethal uh, for big spell mage. Who would have thought it? Kind of wild is this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there is a file here if Osher had wanted it. Um, looks like he's going to go for it because yeah. it is lethal. He has to play his own giggling inventor. But this is just pretty good for Cat to play. He's going to go for the tempo Umbra. Okay, that kind of makes sense. And it's quite funny as well because he's not actually giving him a chance to play that Void Lord or anything like that. But I this think th this he knows by now it's going to have a polymorph by then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but this is actually quite smart by Osh as well. It's meant that the the, the Jaina comes out here, Void Lord comes down, summons the Void Walkers, so that at least Gul'dan has something in the pool, so that he just plays Gul'dan on 10 to get the heal and get the Gul'dan hero power online. Hmm. He's not just going to die to a board immediately. Obviously, there is things like Flame Strike and Meteor in the hand, but he's going to have something in it. That's right, but... Gets that Jaina down nice and comfortably compared to what we could have expected later on where we thought she may take a bit of time to get that out. But it seems like so far it's all been perfectly fine and, you know, could get another elemental out if um, that free fall stays up. Of course, it can trade. But then again, it can just go for face. Depends on what she wants to do, really. I assume she will probably play it safe until that time comes. But we spoke about it before, that gig inventor, pretty much a dead card at this stage. Yeah, I mean, potentially you could play it this turn, but because he might, Osha might want to play Void Lord and then Dark Pack the Void Lord in the same turn that he plays it, just to make it make sure it's in the Gul'dan pool. Um, and that's definitely something that he's kind of considering. Do I have to do that here? Can I play the Giggling? Just um, it protects this uh, this Spirit Singer Umbra anyway, which. At the moment, it's looking like it just gives a water oh, elemental anyway. But no, you're just going to go for the Void Lord this turn. Look to play Gul'dan next turn. Yeah, that's fair enough. So, of course, the Void Walkers will come out automatically anyway. And, you know, this Dragon Fury may be quite useful at this stage, considering the circumstances. We'll get that Polymorph straight away, which is fair enough. I, you could tell that he actually expected that just due to the fact that it's been quite long in the game, hasn't used any at all. And that Mossy Hole is going to... Definitely pay for itself going into that. And only three left, which means now he can't use that Hellfire unless he he uh, he packs something. Yeah. Osha could look to play this second Void Lord he's just drawn. It's a bit risky because you would die to a Baron Geddon hero power unless you dark packed it. Um, could just play the Gul'dan as well. It, it would just summon three Void Walkers, which obviously we can see as a Flame Strike, but Osha knows there's so many ways that that just gets removed. Um, and with the Mossy Horror on board, it would actually give Cat the, the two attack to trade into and ping a Void Walker if she wanted to do that. It's a very hard decision in this stage. I never thought that a, <laughs> a cube block at this stage would be on suchness. I was expecting, like, you know, around this sort, sort of time, it's probably on about 24 health. You know, it's doing all right, and Cat has only pulled many minions, but now I've got to chain out. This is a kind of scenario I kind of expected them both to be in, but. To see him struggling on 3 HP, or he was on 6 HP even before we got the Jane out, is pretty, pretty steep stuff. But, you know, he's getting his uh, worth anyway. He's getting a, another Void Lord down. She does have a Polymorph this time round. But then again, he's got two uh, Void Walkers to, sorry, three Void Walkers to deal with anyway. Yeah, it looks like Kat's just going to be able to make a Water Elemental with this. Um, I think this is actually small positional mistake from Osha. I don't know if it actually mattered. But um, could have positioned the Void Walkers next to the Umbra, I believe. I believe that's how that would work. But uh, the Water Elemental was available anyway. It just meant the Meteor cleaned up the Umbra. But um, obviously we're likely to see the Gul'dan come out of Osha here. Um, I'd be very surprised to see anything else. So just going to be able to reset the board, basically. Um, get that Void, walk, uh, Void Lord back. We can see the second Polymorph in hand for Cat now, so Cat will be able to poly ping again, generate another Water Elemental, or potentially we we'll, could just trade into it, ping and Flame Strike. That's an option to clean up all the Void Walkers that would come out. 
Yeah, there's only so much he can do now. Like that guy down probably wouldn't be too bad of a play, but even then, with those void laws, he's like you mentioned, he's already played two himself. Oh no, I think she polymorphed one. Polymorphed one so yeah. I only got one anyway. So she'll polymorph the other, and even then, that flame strike, and even the ping itself, like maybe if he doesn't die on hands, can keep her going and keeping that ball control straight afterwards. Yeah, the the ability to generate walls runs is just so strong in this matchup because Osha can't just play nothing and win. Um, it's a shame. The cooldown hero, <laughs> the cooldown <laughs> hero power is really powerful, but um, I don't know if it's good enough. This is unusual. Yeah, we'll have to see what comes out of this. Do you know what? Considering the circumstances, we'll have to see where it gets. Of course, that Voiloid, like you mentioned before, will get Polymorph, but it seems pretty easy uh, said and done, of course. When you Polymorph out and get the flame, you've got 3, 6, 8, 10. So there will be only two left for her to deal with. Yeah, I think Cat will potentially just trade into this to go ping and flame strike in the same turn. Um, Osher had set one of the what's relevant to us to three anyway to kind of. Trying to suggest that he just wanted to hero power that one anyway, so this makes sense, I think, as a play. Just cleans up all the void walkers, gets the pressure going again. And now Osha's just in a difficult spot where he's gonna need to play these Doom Guards from hand at some point. Yeah, at least it went before where if he actually used a Doom Guard in that scenario from before, you know, could have lose that cooldown, could lose that void lord, but if this seems to be a lot better circumstance, but then again, if he loses the cube, then that's a potentially another win condition he can really deal without losing compared so to what happened before. But does he want to take this risk? You know what? Yeah. He may actually have to. He can Hellfire, Hellfire ping to at least get both of those um, elementals out of the way. Yeah, I wonder if Asha can sort of try and shift to a fatigue game plan now uh, where he just goes with the kill everything the mage does plan with these Doom Guards just kind of My stranded hunger. in hand for a while. He goes for the Hellfire hero power, like you said. Upgrades the spell stone as well. Um, faceless in hand. Maybe you've had Faceless, one of the major threats like the Lich King. Um, I must be it's very difficult for us here, but I wonder if that's sort of a, a game plan he could shift to. It doesn't seem it here, but this cooldown here, Pai, it, it really adds up a lot over time, very quickly. But then again, so do the elementals, which is, uh, yeah, <laughs> which is another pain. But as long as Osha doesn't give her the opportunity to pink for, element, so for any uh, elementals then it should be fine but you've got to look at her hand for a bit so you've got a couple dragon fires to deal with any pressure it's got that stone hill to deal with any more that uh that sorry the uh the drake wouldn't be too bad in itself does have that doom set again something else you could do with the blizzard to delay things further so she's got the minions to keep osha back at yeah. this stage but i think you're right i think he will have to play that fatigue game but a giggling inventor again? Yeah, that's not gonna help. I mean, there's there's strange worlds where you can like giggling inventor and hero power the two one, but that's not. Really I was what, thinking that. It's yeah. Not really what you want to be doing, is it? No, um, no. You want to put the pressure on, don't you? Not yeah. <laughs> get the pressure I mean, up. Cat forcing the Godfrey out earlier on to like an abomination and a, a Raven familiar, and I think it might be like an acolyte of pain, maybe. Um, it's just left Osha with such limited removal options that he's just in a really bad spot now. Yeah, normally it's kind of circumstance. You want to put like one big minion down just to kind of not give her the option to use any of AOE, but slowly deteriorate her. But I don't. F I think it might be a little bit too late at this stage. It's, you know, like you mentioned before, has a tomb dune guard, but if that cube goes or anything like that, then might be in a spot of bother. But if those two inventors go, then you know what? Actually, it's probably not a bad loss in all fairness. Yeah, that's actually kind of kind of what you want, right? Um, yeah. We've seen some weird things, but <laughs> do you know what? If I did see the two inventors go, <laughs> it would not surprise me the slightest. But of course, he's got to play it. But it, is, it looks like he's not going to anyway. He is going to play the uh, inventor just to keep her back. But chooses not to um, ping 2 1. Yeah, I think he's having to concede that he's going to have to give Cat more tournamentals here. Um, if, he, if he doesn't hero power the, the Furious Etin, then. It's just going to stick around forever. Um, I'm just really struggling to see the way Osha can manipulate this board to ever be ahead again. Um, if Cat's ahead, Cat can always try and dictate making water elementals. Um, 
Cat's able to generate her own water elementals. There's things like a giggling inventor skill in the deck, which obviously, obviously here it was a, a water elemental 2-1. It would be again, if Cat played her own, she'd quite happily ping her own and turn that into a water elemental. Yeah, there's so many different options. And the problem with Voshi has got no options. It's like I mentioned before, like, you know, he has a few minions there, which are, I wouldn't say fully pointless, but at this stage of the game, it's looking quite bleak. Those Doom Guards are just going to, if as soon as they get put down, he's just going to run out of tempo, run out of steam, and probably run out, well, run out of even more options compared to what is before. Small misplay from Cat there, where she could have pinged off the Divine Shield, I think, instead of double trading into it and pinging the face, but... I don't think that's going to matter too much. A couple of damage. She's pretty comfortable. I think I think she's yeah. allowed to make mistakes at this yeah. stage. <laughs> but yeah, with this... Um, I don't want to call it too early, but... but this anti-magic shell looks really good against the cooldown hero power. Mm. So many it's probably the best Lich King card she could have gotten, actually. Yeah, you couldn't really ask them all <laughs> in all yeah. fairness to, like, you know... Make your minions not be able to be targeted by their hero power. That seems really powerful. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's good. I think this will be going to a game five of this stage. It's, just, it's like ever since that weapon was taken out by the use, it just pretty much showed that it was, that was it pretty much. And, you know, he may get Lich King in his own, but even then we'll have to see what he gets out of it. Not really too much in all fairness. But decides to go for two anyway. But it isn't really too much of a bad play. There's not really too much you could have done with that card anyway. Maybe you could have got another Doom card out of it, then cubed it. But in all fairness, he's not really in a position to do that, but gets a coil. Yeah, I think going for the Hero Lich King cards was maybe the best out. Um, things like Death Grip, you could steal the Alana, but the Alana's not really that good for the Warlock. Um, yeah, Cat just going to go for the Polymorph Ping here. Probably get the AMS up on these minions and then just be able to take it home, it looks like. It seems that way, and you know, what better... <laughs> What better card to have than the anti-magic spell? And I think Osha just knew from them, but it's facing death in the face, you could say. Yeah, it definitely looks that way. Um, also, not that matters, but these water elementals now heal five each turn they hit. So if Osha's able to somehow zap a two-turn <laughs> lethal, not happening. Nah, no, <laughs> pretty much done and dusted. It's just a matter of time. I think even Cat's laughing, thinking, yeah, what, <laughs> what else are you thinking? I think you tried to actually <laughs> hero power one of them just um, You said you've never done that, where like, you just really avoid like, when just, you get that just hero power it, hit it, <laughs> hit it, go on, one time. When you get that desperate to that point score, I hope that something that doesn't work just works anyway. <laughs> hit it, hit it. <laughs> but yeah, this us um, talk about the next game, of course. You know, another game five, you know, I love how it's like elimination day pretty much for all three match with all six of these players and you know it's going to the wire now in every single game and that's going to be that odd warrior versus cube lock and you know things are going to get tough now i think cat's played really well she played very comfortably you know top decking that ooze i can't complain you know considering he had a void lord he top decked a sorry top decked a doom guard straight afterwards and then got another doom guard i think a few turns later so it was a bit of a shame really he did that cube afterwards as well he had them with a piece of the puzzle but that weapon i think was definitely the talking point that was where Things could have shifted in his way and could have changed the outcome completely. But sadly for him, it just wasn't the case. Yeah, Kat had the hammer to smash that puzzle <laughs> apart. <laughs> she did. It's just, I've never seen someone laugh so much and like looking at that one card. I was just like, yeah, you're, Osh you're is, done. Osh you're is a beach <laughs> building a sandcastle. Kat just comes in, <laughs> kicks it down. Yeah, you know, I used to hate that when people did that to me. But anyway, speaking of Sandcastle, anyway, game five, we're going to see who Sandcastle is going to get destroyed this time around. But with this odd warrior, cube lock matchup how do you think will pan out because have you played this matchup in uh multiple ways or is it um, something you're not too not uh, particularly familiar because with? cube lock's sort of been out of the meta for a little while now it's basically zoom isn't it yeah it's Warlock. not been too popular on ladder but um it's kind of it's another one where maybe you have to try and play for fatigue as the warrior just because i mean you're a deck that runs no threats that's kind of what you have to do um obviously cat's running the gluttonous who's here just one some lists are running two but um just the one, so if she can find that, make sure the skull doesn't try and ruin and create early pressure with Doom Guards yeah, and cubes and things. But um, <laughs> things like Dr. Boom as well, you just need to try and outvalue the Warlock, basically. Your hero power, because you, for the first few turns, or like the first 10 turns or so, uh, you can overheal with the hero power, but theirs obviously can't overheal because yours is armor, theirs is healing. So you actually can win in fatigue games as well, especially if the Warlock taps really heavily. Um, quite often you can win in fatigue, and I think that's probably 
one of the best things Cat could play for here, just play for fatigue from turn one. Yeah, I think it's going to be one of those situations where we'll have to see what again and Mulligan and hopefully, yeah, there won't be any oozes this time. Well, we'll have to see what happens. But we've just queued off as well, you know, I think we've got to try and take into consideration like what kind of scenarios is in. Like with the odd warrior, would you say that you know you want to try and keep away from the late game as much as possible, just due to the fact that the cube block can get a little bit of out of hand with some of the stuff you can actually do, or do you feel like the odd warrior still has an opportunity to make some kind of comeback later on in the matchup? Um, I think they can potentially get to a point where they've exhausted the warlock of threats, and if there are enough cards ahead in fatigue, or if they had armored up enough then they can outvalue the hero power. The hero power for Warlock is a six swing in terms of power of damage and healing at the end game. The Warrior one is four, but it's from turn one that it's four. So it's kind of it kind of evens out in that sense, provided the game doesn't go indefinitely, which obviously it can't because of fatigue. Um look like I was considering coin hero power, which I'd have actually loved to be honest. I'd have loved getting that extra hero power in. <laughs> Maybe if it was a freeze mage versus con <laughs> control warrior back oh, in like, yeah, 2015, the... 16. You know, like, <laughs> I would actually do that. I'm like, yeah, you, you know, might as well. Or Just there was, there was the thing where you coin hero power, so you can hero power every turn for the shield slam on the mountain giant on four. Yes, I that's think that true. Was, I think that was the thing. I might be misremembering. I might. I don't know. I didn't play then. I've been. I've only heard of those days. <laughs> it's just a distant memory now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the cooldown picked realize. up pretty early for Osha is going to be pretty key in this matchup, as I was talking about. I think this is, cat has to try and play this one for fatigue because she can't pressure the warlock enough. So the the cooldown on ten not going to be what cat wants to see. I don't think. Yeah, as you know, because Osha doesn't have that coin, won't be able to get that giant out in turn three. So we'll be getting it out next time in turn four. And I think thanks to that Stonehill defender, next turn after that she can at least arm up again and the uh, shield slam. You know, I got shield slam in my brain now. <laughs> <laughs> straight after you said that. So he can take out the giant straight after he's put it down. And it depends if he wants to take that risk. I think Kat could have considered, thought about that turn a little bit more. I think potentially just hero powering every turn is potentially just right in this map. I'm not too sure. Maybe Kat's play, played it a bit of practicing after seeing the lineups come out. But um, potentially just hero powering every turn is kind of one of the best things you can do. No, I completely agree. Yeah, maybe like, I think in this kind of circumstance, at least with the Stonehill defender, maybe not being the best of plays, but at least keeps the giant at bay. But then again, I'm sure she'll probably find a way to take out this giant either with the shield block or just what? simply um, pinging for the armor end. Finish him up. It looks like we'll be using the shield block anyway and clearing out that giant like I mentioned before. Yeah, the, the shield slam early on the giant is just so nice. It really shuts that down. Obviously, there's no weapon coming down this time, which Kat would be pretty pleased to see, given that she doesn't have the, the ooze this time. Although, I'm sure it's sat there on the top of the deck as soon as that ooze <laughs> comes out. As soon as the weapon comes out, sorry. Um, but potentially, Kat's going to be able to get a Darius Crowley out this turn. Um, maybe be able to build sort of a, a small threat with that that needs dealing with. Um, Spellstones aren't actually upgraded. The Spellstone Hand, rather, isn't actually upgraded for Osha yet. So. Yeah, because with the Ooze in this deck, I think it's only one. I think if I'm. Yeah, yes. on my head. Yeah, so. Yeah. So to, you know, top deck at the same time he gets his weapon would be. Uh, again, yeah, it feels bad, man, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it feels over at that stage. But, but in all fairness, he hasn't even got his weapon to even play, let alone any of that. And even if he did. He does have that Void Lord to play straight afterwards. But he's getting a few bits now, you know, still ha he has the cube, he has the Doom Guard now, so he does have a few bits to use later on, but of course it's way too early to even consider that. Even using the uh, the Lackey, which he has done already, won't be too much of a bad shout. Yeah, I mean, Cat, there's a Gore Howl available if a Doom Guard came out of it, and Cat might potentially want to try and make that happen because if you let Osha proc the Lackey on his turn. He can then do things like keep impacting it if it is a Doom Guard, and it is. So Cat's actually going to be able to coin out the Gore Howl and clean that up, which is really nice for Cat here. Osha did not seem happy about that one. No, he, <laughs> he did not at all. So it's, that was a pure... Like a very rude phrase. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that was purely a 50-50, because, of course, he had the Void Lord and Doom Guard on the board already, and he's obviously got one more of each in his deck and managed to uh, clean it out. So... Quite a risky 50-50, but 
I think as Odd Warrior, you need to make these fisty plays. You can't really uh, come out of it at that stage. Um, I don't think it was actually that risky for Cat because, I mean, if a Void Lord comes out, it's not that sad anyway. The Void Lord's not that big of a threat. Um, That's true. It just kind of hits for three. Mate, I mean, if there's two Void Lords, it's a bit annoying, but your hero power's four, uh, armor's up for four, so it's it's pretty reasonable, I think, to just go for that play because the upside of denying a cube packed on, on the Doom Guard is so huge. The thing is, though, the problem with Ashen now is the fact that he's got so many good cards in his hands ready to be played later on, but it's that risk of, you know, if he wants to put that Doom Guard down and then put a cube down straight afterwards, that's quite good, but at least if he's got two cubes and loses one, then it's not too bad, but he's got that gold down there, you know, got two cubes in that pack. You've got Void Lord, which you can also lose. I'm not saying that it will make a huge impact in this kind of game, but maybe later on when it comes to that circumstance where he needs to delay Cap, then it's going to be a a huge viable option and Cat will be ready for that with uh, MC later on as well. Yeah, definitely. If uh, Vosha ever goes wide, Cat does have double MC tech in the deck, obviously one in hand, like you were saying, to kind of punish that. Um, and this 5-9 is just really difficult for Osha to deal with right now. Um, Osha not wanting to play Doom Guards, like you were saying, because of the Gul'dan. I think Osha at this point has to kind of accept it's a value matchup and um, throwing away cards with your Doom Guard just isn't great. Uh, potential. I mean, there's no getting the Doom Guards out this turn doesn't really help you too much because Cat's pretty much always going to be able to remove them with this Gore Howl equipped, and you don't have you haven't used it. So it makes sense to just try, for Osha to try and play patiently here. Yeah, I think you've hit it, sorry you hit the nail on the head there. Literally, if he plays his Void Lord later on, plays his Gore Dan, make sure that the uh, the ingredients he has in his hand, you know, he can risk losing then that's perfectly fine. But I think as long as that Gul'dan's been played, the Void Lord's been played, then I think he's a lot safer to go, well, you know what? I think I can play the Doom Guard. I'm in a uh, a great state of mind. And, you know, if he loses, like, you know, the, the Spellstone or the, uh, the Pact or anything like that, then it won't be uh, too bad. Yeah, and I think Osha kind of can take the time uh, here because with the Void Lord, just come down by the time he needs against this board. This board isn't really that threatening for Osha with the vo once the Void Lord's down. Um, obviously, the Mountain Giant might have changed things, but I think Osha wants to get the Void Lord down, get the Ghoul down going for value. Because um, once that Void Lord's on the board, then, you know, the Ghoul down. Ghoul downing out one Void Lord, it's not the best Ghoul downer possible, but the hero power is so valuable in these matchups. Kind of makes up for it just straight away for the hero power. You're absolutely right. And this. In this kind of circumstance, he needs to try and decide what he wants to do. Of course, he does have that giant, a nice cheap one at that, but can obviously put it down the turn afterwards or anyway after he puts that called Dan down. And I think she is going to expect it, but getting that Boylord down shot after that, like I mentioned before, at least get these, you know, these cost effective minions, these Boylords, these Gold Dans, get them all out of the way now. So at least that way, when he plays the giant, po sorry, potentially after that called Dan, then he's got free roam to play that Doom Guard, and the chance of him losing both cubes at that stage is uh well of course very low yeah definitely uh i mean we saw there the cards left in deck maybe osha can't actually play for this fatigue plan um he's sort of four cards ahead cat's also got an elise in her deck that she'd be able to play at some point that's going to be another card added to the deck so maybe osha's just not able to play for this fatigue maybe i was kind of overestimating his ability for that one um it's just very difficult for osha when he doesn't have the early pressure and with the Acolytes, Cat's just going to be able to try and find the removal to deal with things like Mountain Giant boards. Yeah, this is that's the, probably one of the issues she's going to have later on, and she will have to give up her armor a couple of times here and there to try and face up the facts that it will get to that stage where Osha will be in a very good spot when that gold hand goes down, and off, with the Giant, it's going to complement it, and when that Doom Guard gets cubed later on in a few turns afterwards, that's where we're going to see if she can handle this pressure and deal with exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, definitely. I mean, maybe with Cat drawing with the Acolyte, this is a three-draw Acolyte that kind of closes the gap. Usher could think about playing for Fatigue. Um, I might really be overselling the Fatigue factor, though. I just think that it's kind of how this matchup has to go for the Warrior. So Usher should have, could recognize that going into the matchup and maybe realize that because that's how the Warrior has to play, if he has Gul'dan, he doesn't need to tap ever again. He can just Gul'dan on 10, hero power every turn. The warrior, the warrior deck is so threat light that maybe he could just get there doing that. 
That is quite, no, you're absolutely right. They're quite true. And um, just looking at Cat's hand at the moment, that BGH is just sitting there waiting for that giant <laughs> to come through. So <laughs> <laughs> probably one of the only cards could actually make some kind of uh, impact on it. But look at everything else, you know, she's got two flurries, got a brawl as well. So she has the AOEs to keep them back if things get a little bit dishy, but we'll have to see how it goes from there. Yeah, definitely. Osha could consider cubing the giants, play around the the um, the DGH, like you said. Uh, given that he's played the Defile there, set it to three with the Gorehound board, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, it means that at some point, if Cat ever wants to brawl now, this cube's just going to spit out two giants that, yeah, you can BGH one, but you can't BGH two. Um, Cat's even got the use in hand now. Anytime that weapon comes out, ready to go. All set and waiting. Osha, where's your weapon? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a bit late for that, to be fair, because he's... Uh, He's already, I think, how many Void Lords he plays? He's, played, uh, he's, he's already got two, uh, one two, two, two guys, technically, because one in his hand. But yep. speaking of Void Lords, yep, there's, there the, there's, there's your boy. <laughs> there's your boy, the Void Lord. Yeah, yeah. no, it's. Uh, yeah, I think at this stage, a weapon would be very useful. But I think it's a bit late at this stage. It doesn't really need it. It's already in a. Not, not too early to say, but in a comfortable spot. But we'll yeah, have to see how he deals with the two giants once that. Once that uh, uh, Sword of Q's been initiated, it's death row. Yeah, this late in the game as well, you kind of expect the Warrior to just have the use in hand. There's a lot of cards they've had in their hand for a long time they haven't played. Obviously, we can see that the BGH, the MC Tech, and the Zilliax have been sat on the left-hand side of the hand for a long time. Osha won't know what the cards are, but you can reasonably assume they, they wouldn't have tempoed out that ooze at any point because of your skull at some point. Um, Osha in a really difficult spot here. Does... Does he just play the Void Lord into this into this backing? I think it seems quite reasonable. Just leave this leave this cube on board. I, I, maybe he's thinking about even just um, Tower Ramming the cube, which wouldn't be the worst play. That you get another another cube with Mountain Giants in. Um, going for the Umbra as well. This is actually I like this a lot from Osha. A lot more than the, the Void Lord. You, I think you're just gonna put so much pressure on with these Giants that there's not really too much Cat can do about it. I mean, potentially, well, actually, the brawl is really good from Kat here, right? If she trades the Baku into the big cube and then weapons into the small one and then just brawls, and then BGH is the cube that's left over. Yeah, that's probably not a bad shot. If he does it now, then what more could she have asked for? She obviously will use that brawl straight off the bat. Yeah. And, and want to see if that 7-4 survives. <laughs> yeah. I think Osha was just kind of hoping there was no brawl in hand. Um, but it does seem quite reasonable there would be a brawl at the No! Time. And the Baku <laughs> lives. Oh, God. <laughs> you can see Osha is ecstatic about that one. I'm really happy about that. There's a, I think... A little smile from Kat as she <laughs> realises how filthy that was. From the top of my head, I think there's a 12.5% chance of that happening. Because uh, one, one in eight, eight yeah, 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 one in eight. So 12 and a percent chance. And do you know what? She nailed it. Do you know what? She doesn't need that ooze anymore. When that weapon comes down, she'll be laughing again. <laughs> laughing again. But oh, th th to be fair, if we see it from an outside point of view, that was a really good play by Osha. But one thing that needs to take into account is the fact that she was bound to have a ball just due to the fact that it's getting quite late into the game now. Yeah, One's it's late, gonna happen it's late now. to the game. We hadn't seen any... Um... Would a Reckless Flurry have done it? No, it'd have had to been like a Shield Block and Reckless Flurry for that to be able to work. Um, yeah, Brawl just made a lot of sense. Um, I think potentially we'll even see the second Brawl come out here. Uh, no, we won't, excuse me, because not a second Brawl in hand. Oh, that's a good oh, MC Tech. no. That's a good MC Tech, taking the... <laughs> cube that, Osha. You know, okay, let's think about this game as a whole, right? So... She 50 50 a Void Lord and a Doom Guard and got what she wanted, a Doom Guard with the Gore Howl, and yep. then traded with that. She won and aided the, <laughs> the six Giants and the other two, I can't remember the top of my head. And she, I would probably say one and two because I think the Void Lord's still okay in this kind yeah. of matchup as well. 50 50 that and got the Doom Guard. Yeah, I wouldn't say Kat's been particularly lucky this game, though, just because... No. Um, oh, no, 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 she could have... Sorry, Osha could have cubed the Doom Guard as well, but yeah. Yeah. But I think um, because Kat had the BGH lined up for the, the Mountain Giant anyway, the 7-4 seven, uh, the seven four living was kind of obviously not what Osha wanted to see, but I don't think it was actually that impactful to the outcome of the game because the BGH was in hand. Um, 
similar with obviously big to just gore how down that void uh, that doom gun before it got out of hand was a, a great but like i said at the time if the void lord had come out kind of okay because it's just not a very high pressure high pressure card it just doesn't line up that well against your hero power you're still netting armor every turn um so oh no i think this has just been fine for the cat i mean obviously i'm not gonna say the outcomes were unfortunate for her but i don't think <laughs> i don't think she's winning this game because of luck that's what i was trying to say yeah, yeah. no 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 you're i don't no, want to try and discredit right. that yeah no you're no you're perfectly right because like i mentioned before <laughs> if, if show oh, <laughs> go on cat go on please for me just why you think get an mc snap down it. take snap. the four six <laughs> don't even think about it just snap it i don't care if it's the wrong player or anything just snap <laughs> play it take the cube take the cube <laughs> Uh, if she takes this cube... No, to be fair, actually, yeah, that, that 12 and a half percent chance of that other thing happening, it wouldn't have mattered because, like I said before, if there's a giant down, BGH would have cleared it anyway. But it's the fact that if he can save it, it doesn't mean it make too much difference. But, oh, okay, right. Yeah. Yeah, he's happy with that. He's thinking, well, you know what? I got, <laughs> I got a little bit lucky with that, at least. Uh, I'd have I'd have loved that. If Same. If that stole the cube, I'd have been so happy. <laughs> I don't know what I would have said. I think you could, you could maybe say to Osho after this game, you could maybe say to him, yeah, he was a little bit unlucky there, mate. <laughs> but he kept the cube, so all's well. Yeah, that's the main thing. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like I said before, he's never really been too lucky. I think the two fifty fifties were a bit lucky, but yeah, that one in eight situation was very lucky, but yeah, it wasn't exactly necessary anyway. But looking at this situation, so he's got a cube. So in his cube, he's obviously got two Void Lords. Still got another one in hand. Still does have Dungard as well. But he's got no more cubes left. So Cat's only got a few so bits and pieces diseases. to kind of clear up, really, you could say. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's just not that many threats left. This is it's looking very favorable for Cat. She's got the Doctor Boom to switch hero power at some point if she thinks the armor's not going to be good enough anymore. Um the Brilliant Nullifier, if she can stick that on a minion as well, that, the, that's again the magnetic, can't be targeted. Um, that's just going to be really difficult for Osha to deal with. Um, I believe there's a Faceless still left in the deck for Osha, so maybe he's looking to Faceless the cube and be able to just get there with Void Lords. Um, Cat's definitely in a good position here, but Osha still has game just because of the Faceless being being around. So, um, interestingly, Cat's Cat's uh, Odd Warrior list, not playing Faceless Manipulator, which um, seemed uh, quite popular in the more recent builds. Yeah, I have to see how we take it from there, of course. That goal does not do too much against that 5 of 10 at this stage, unless he wants to try and get desperate <laughs> like in that last game. But yeah, you were saying about that Faceless Manipulator, and uh, look what he's got. Yeah, there it is. Um, I don't know if it's going to be enough because Cat's still got these reckless flurries. Um, if Cat can find the bolts and gain enough armor, I don't know if she can ever gain enough armor for the reckless flurries to actually be that good anymore. There's it's the turn that she plays Doctor Boom and then maybe gets the seven armor hero power. Maybe that could do it, but um, very risky though, isn't it? No, that's the yeah. issue. Because even then, like at least you got the standard four armor turn to to snap out anytime you like and I think that's what she's doing she just wants to keep it as long as possible make some kind of use of these flies as much as he can yeah getting the life still on this minion is pretty good though um Osha's gonna need to trade into the uh into these with the cubes into this to clear it most likely um obviously not able to target it with spellstone or hero power again pretty good effectively AMS on one minion like last game where Osha wasn't able to target Minions of the hero power. It's just so difficult to get through something this big for for Osha now. That's right, and even that lucky is gonna make absolutely no use because of course the cards which have already been played in the hand are already in his hand or been played already, so it's gonna be mm. completely useless in itself and with the pact he can use that later on, but even then it's kind of one of those situations which he wants in or not. But what would you do in this kind of scenario with Osha? I think you'll be thinking the same thing. It's you know We've only got so much time to play with, and it's, it's getting quite difficult because every time he feels like he's got an opportunity to try and get Cat down in HP, it's uh, just doesn't seem to be happening. Because, of course, with that armor, it's just a matter of time, and she still hasn't got that brawl yet. But those flurries could um, play a big part eventually at some stage. Yeah, if Cat's able to find a way to, I mean, with this on board, then you're right, she's going to be able to build up that armor, go for the flurries. Um, 
because it's so difficult for Osha to push through. Um, I think potentially Osha might just end up dropping a Void Lord this turn, something like that. Could even play the Lackey and try and bluff that the there's still demons in the deck. I mean, something has to be in the deck still. Um, Osha trading one cube off here. This is not going to be too great at this stage at all. Do you think that was even the right move? Because at this stage, what I was trying to think was the fact that even though this 8-8 can at least hold its own for a little bit, there's only so much this can do. What do you think Osh is trying to do at the moment? Is he trying to find ways to bait these flurries out so that, or maybe even the brawl? But even then, it's um, still hasn't even pulled that brawl down yet. Maybe if he gets it from the shield block, but even then, it's uh, maybe a little bit too early. Yeah, I think... I think Cats just need to try and find a way to clear off that cube. As soon as that cube's gone, then the rest gets a lot easier, I think. Um, the issue is, at the moment, that cube can stick around on board. Osha's going to be able to double trade with the, the Void Lords, trade the Giggling Inventor as well, and then this 8-8's dead. Um, Cat could potentially go for Dr. Boom and look for things in the Dr. Boom hero power, but I don't know if that's going to be good enough. Yeah, even then, I suppose you can armor and then... And then use it, but decides to. Yeah, decides I to think. It anyway, that's I think this enough. makes sense because um, she has the one fl uh, another flurry in hand still anyway. Um, obviously, dynamatic only hits max, so. I think that's the one thing she's gonna be happy about with the Void Lords is the fact that in this kind of situation he's in, the Void Lords. Yes, your phantom's got four on the board. It can delay things, but he doesn't want to delay things. He needs to start pushing things out there. He needs to be aggressive, but you can't be aggressive with just, you know, a, a few free attack minions on the board at the moment. So, and even at this stage, you can tell now, he's got another card, you know, he's had the Lackey, which has not really been too much use, but now the weapon's not going to be too much use either at this stage. Yeah, I mean, we can see Osh is down to five cards left in his deck now. Cat's got six, so the fatigue's come pretty close, so... Um, Cat drew quite a lot. This shield block potentially draws another one. Uh, Cat does still have an Elise in the deck, which is going to add another card. But um, this one's definitely really com coming very close to in the fatigue count. Um, it's kind of really difficult for Cat here because the brawls are going to leave Void Walkers on the board and then just to find a way to deal with those as well. They can be cleaned up by a flurry. So if she's able to find this brawl, then maybe she can get there. And then the only threat left, I believe, is one Mountain Giant. One Doom Guard, one Void Lord, and then maybe you can switch to Doctor Boom and find a way to deal with those and just win in the fatigue count. Yeah, I kind of feel like maybe even putting up Doctor Boom down, it's still too early. She's basically just keeping it because she knows there's that risk where yeah, she'll fair enough, she can heal a power for seven, uh, sorry for seven armor, but even then, what, what more can you do in that kind of stage? But I think it looks like she's going to armor and then flurry to take the wrist out of these Void Lords out and leave. Seven Void Walkers on the board. Yeah, I believe so. I think you can't let yourself take this damage repetitively anymore. Yeah. Um, I think it's just a bit too much. But at least now she can play that hero whenever now at this point because of the fact that it gets that stage now where she could have delayed things, delayed things, and delayed things. But, you know, she's taking so much damage at that point where, you know, there's not so much you can do. So I think that was probably the right time to do it. Yeah, definitely. I mean... Yeah, like seven damage this turn. Um, but you know there's no... The burst isn't there. Um, yeah, there's no there's no burst out here. So Osha just going to go for the face. Hero power. Um, I would imagine probably not even play the skull just because there's no benefit. Because if Cat has nothing, then it doesn't pull a demon anyway in the best case. Um, but Cat really doesn't have a way to deal with this here. Um there's, there's a brawl left in the deck. But even then, he's going to put that Doom Guard down. This is the uh, issue we're going to have. It's going to be yeah. extremely tough. We'll have to see what she gets. At least she's got something now to kind of, well, you could say delay things a little bit further now. Yeah, the Giggling Inventor definitely buys some time, but I'm not sure if it's enough. I think Osha might, I think Osha might be able to get there this game just with these, this board that Cat can't deal with. Yeah, it's like you mentioned before, like he's only got a few a few things to deal with at this stage and now he's put that ooze down, he can put his weapon up whenever he feels like, but even then it's not too necessary. Yeah, sure, fair enough, he can put it down for later on for when he trades with the uh the void walkers and then 
get the Doom Guard and the Void Lord out straight afterwards. But we'll have to see how he goes with this. But I think one of the main things to talk about is the fact that at least he's still got that brawl left for when she wants to use it later on. So if she managed to take out these Void Walkers and then things get a little bit out of hand at some stage, then she can use it. But then again, it's not really too much. She, you know, the brawl might not be as useful as it would be now compared to before. Due to the fact that she's only got a Doom Guard, a Giant, a Lackey, and of course that Void Lord will go into the Void Walkers straight afterwards. Yeah, and this, this is just, I think Kat's kind of run out of answers for Osh's threats, like you're saying. Um, maybe she has to go for top decking the Elise pack and then finding things out of the Angoro pack. And I'm not even sure what she could find that could be good enough. There's Primordial Glyph. She could Primordial Glyph into something like a Brawl because um, it will find Warrior spells. Yeah, even now, it's just going straight to face with the last minion just due to the fact that he knows that she's the one who has to um, take one of his minions out, but at this stage, it's looking pretty bleak. We're trying to find an answer for the whole time, but it seems like Osha managed to delay things enough to maybe have an opening. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really seeing the advocate. She can trade and play a dynamatic and clean up more minions, but I just don't know if it's enough. Can I look in the Omega Assembly see if there's any answers in there. Another security rover, not not looking too great. The Clockwork Anomatron, not not good enough either, because that doesn't double the healing of your hero power. Gonna go for this Doctor Boom. I'd like to see her now not trade into a one-two. Um, what trades into one three? I that's think that's good. Life. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, he was lucky. That was yeah. <laughs> that was actually the only one free <laughs> yeah. left on the board. Um, much was not being damaged. Now there's these these mechs will have rush now, so the security rovers can bump into things and generate two three taunts um, that potentially might get her there. But this is just another ten damage that she's taken now. So she gained eleven last time with the boom hero power, and effectively back to back to where she was now. But she is Doctor Boom now, which means these do have rush. Like I said. Yeah, it's gonna be it's a definitely a tough one. I'm trying to think because of course the acolyte's gonna be absolutely useless at this stage, and it's a shame because those three minions you got, none of them can help in any kind of way. And the BGH is saving for that giant when <laughs> whenever he does get that second one down. Okay, then. And I'm pretty sure he does have a second one. Yes, he does. So it's going to see exactly what he can do. Shield slam can be uh, for that other Doom Guard later on if he. Uh, if she does get that hero power for seven armor, that's again that's going to be more based on chance. Yeah, definitely. I think the security room is kind of the way to go. I think. Um, and she gets a mecha food and then just uses that thing in her hand and then somehow destroy it. <laughs> uh, optimistic. I'm going to call that play. Um, potentially, she could just take the unpowered mauler to play it this turn. The unpowered steam bot you can magnetize things onto in the future, but it's not looking that great. Um, it's Mecharoo. It's going to be able to just clean up a couple minions. Um, I like that she's used the shield slam as well. Here, Kat's recognized that she's not going to have armor reliably ever again. So just remove the minion while it does things. Gets the Void Lord first, which is pretty good because it just gives her a little bit more time to build the board that is able to things. The Hellfire here, not looking too good for Osha. Unlikely to see that this turn. Um, I'd like to see maybe just like a Possessed Lackey. Um, he does know there's another Brawl though, so he's at the moment he's playing around that, I would imagine, um, even though we know it's one of the last few cards My in Cat's deck. Yeah, it's going to be one of those predicaments now. It's obviously what he doesn't know, it will be one of her last cards and even then it's, she's going to have to hope for uh, a Lucky Brawl with that and even now, later on, if those, if she does manage to take out the whole board, still got three Void Walkers on board straight so after that, plus Hero Power, nine plus the Hellfire, that's still nine nine damage he can just put on at any time. Plus the Doom Guard, 14. Yeah, it's, it's really scary for the cat here. Um, are these Microbots going to be able to do enough? She's got another Security Rover, so she can generate some more taunts. Um, and they can't be Hellfired through because then it just actually summons another one when the Security Rovers take damage again. Um, so potentially, she might be able to do something with that. Um, 
I'm going to kill off one of these here, recognizing with the spellstone, recognizing that it's just going to keep generating them. Um, so Cat can be pretty sure there's going to be a Void Lord coming down this turn. There's the uh, sorry, a Doom Guard. There's the Brawl pickup. The the Microbots with the Brawl is um, quite good because it just dilutes the pool so much that weights it and Cat's uh, gives Cat a much more likely a favorable outcome. Um, this fatigue ticking for Cat now is scary. Yeah, it's becoming so difficult now and. No matter what happens, if you have a look here, 6, 11, 14, yeah, so. Unless she gets some taunts up or takes a risk, like, oh, she's tempted to do that, use that N'Goro pack, or maybe even put Giggly Inventor down just to delay things further. But, you know, at this stage in fatigue, hmm. you've only got so many, so much stuff you could do here. Even the Microbot, you could say, you know, you could at least trade off two of these Voidwalkers and trade the other one off of the uh, 2 3. Yeah, it's very difficult. Can't recognize him there. This at least pack needs to come down at some point. Just going to get it now so that she has is much more likely to be able to actually utilize the cards out of it. I think that was the right play. Yeah, I don't really think there's anything else she could have done. The only stuff she could have done is, you know, put the Giggly Inventor down or put that other zero nine down, which she's obviously done that instead. But I think Cat still does have a chance, but it's a matter of what she can do with it in these next few turns. Because now you've got a member that, even though Osha does have that hero power to give himself free HP each time, he's the one in fatigue. And mm -hmm. she's going to have at least, you know, four more cards until she goes back into fatigue again. Uh, no, Cat starts fatiguing after her next draw. Oh, sorry. Next draw then. <laughs> um, oh, the Brawl is very key here. So Cat will know that Osha's out of threats. I mean, in theory, Cat can just track all the cards left in Osha's hand. Um, it's open deck list, so we'll know what they are. Um, so this brawl is going to be pretty key to getting things done. Potentially, she'll be able to brawl and then uh, use a mech to, so maybe the dynamatic to clean things up. Um, the scary part is the void walk is left after the brawl, though. Um, so I have to see how she wants to do this. Um, yeah, it's weird. I'm more focused on like what's actually happening here compared, <laughs> compared to actually casting because this is again another super close game five but at this stage it could be the last yeah so Osh is obviously set up for the hero power lethal here um so cat needs to gain some form of life this turn there is life gain in the least packs there's things like iron hide and binding heal but i don't think they're going to be good enough long term um Okay, then. Yeah, I think it could just be a little bit too late, which was a shame. It's uh, It must be annoying to the point where, you know, there's only two minions she just had to make sure she dealt with, and it went to the very last point. But oh, let's see which has so... And that's not going to do it. It looks, no. like, it looks like Osha is going to be taking the game and the series and staying alive in the Prem. It's going to be three and two to Osha. Yeah, well, no, honestly, well played to Osh. I, <laughs> I literally could not believe it because there was, it was like a mix of hit and miss in certain scenarios. But, of course, Cat will lose that again, another close series. It's kind of been a story of her life in this Prem into the fact that she's played some really good people going up into this bracket. But Thank you. there's been some series where literally, you know, she could have closed out but just missed out on a few opportunities here and there. And... It's happened again, sadly. But, you know, she's had a very good run. Sadly, she will be getting knocked out of the Prem and Osha will be moving on, surviving as always. And, yeah, again, another extremely close game five, which was, well, what I'd like to see, you know? Yeah, no, um, that's definitely a long and grueling series. I mean, I'm sure you felt it. And I, I imagine it. <laughs> I imagine the players definitely did. Those series are really taxing. So, um, you know, yeah, the series is good when you like want to watch it more than actually cast it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's when it's difficult. Um, I mean, to be honest, there were just so many difficult turns in so many of those games. That's right. And as you can see there, Osha does move on and manages to defeat Cat 